<laughs> Poor girl to have to deal with young, I mean, lady, young lady to have to deal with this crazy stuff. Oh, boy. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And that's why it's in the right place. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Ooh. Whatever side of the diaspora that you're on, I want you to know that I welcome you and I appreciate you. To my listeners in Vietnam, um, I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. And sometimes you would think that the language barrier would be a problem, but at the end of the day, you understand um, the content. You understand what being brown on this planet is. So I appreciate y'all. Those of you guys in Cambodia, uh, shout out to y'all today. Uh, this is one of the most cruel stories from a law enforcement point of view that they had, you know, they could impose on somebody psychic. Um, Vanessa Bryan had to run from the L.A. courtroom in tears after barman tells the jury how an off-duty sheriff's deputy showed him photos of Kobe and Gianna, dead bodies. I, I mean, I, I can't believe it. I, I can't believe this is how morbid. This is how morbid. You know, people like that, some, you know, uh, that's a, I don't think that, you know, there's a website. Uh, and also, when you train for uh, police academy, you know, there's those websites like Smoking Gun and, um, you know, The Dead, whatever. And they show you bodies. You know, and a lot of times people do that to desensitize themselves, not to sensitize themselves, but to just put themselves in a familiarity zone of where what a police or law enforcement um, agents has to go through. Just like I took one of those classes where you get to ride with the cop. It was just, it was a really good experience as to how you had to make those uh split second decisions whether to shoot somebody or not it was all simulated it was very interesting i don't know if that goes on across the other parts of the country but they certainly do it here well they did do it i don't know at least up to about maybe five years ago so uh but those classes are always good to take if they offer them in your city but this right here this is not that kind of work it says, uh, she, you know, you, who, who, first of all, who can blame her from running the hell out of here looking at these, some, ugh, pa passing along. And this was still so new and raw when it was done. Okay. It, it was very new. Kobe, what he means to Los Angeles and what he means to most people. You know, basketball fans in general, how could you be so ruthless to pass them around at a bar where people are getting drunk? And <laughs> it just makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. Nor does it make sense how do you feel that this woman wouldn't try to sue the pants off the you Sheriff Villanueva promised her, promised her that the pictures would be secure, and they were secure. He didn't even punish the officers who were responsible, allegedly, for that act. So once you squeeze the toothpaste out of the hole, there's nothing you can do about it. It's out. You just squeeze it out, and so it's out there. You can't put it back in. I mean, it's, so what do you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. No. 
It's really nothing to say. There's nothing to say after you do something like that. You made this lady have to run out the damn courtroom? I mean, it's already bad enough she lost her husband. Then she lost her daughter, too. And y'all don't have, you still don't have no mercy. And uh, I can see Vanessa has gained a lot of weight. She's a grieving mother and a grieving mourning wife. And um, I wouldn't want to be in her shoes at all, let alone to deal with the deaths. But now she it comes a day of reckoning where she got to deal with these damn officers who were so cruel as to pass her family members' dead bodies around for their entertainment and pleasure, for their jokes. Gutierrez had been describing what he saw in the photo shown by a Los Angeles uh, County Sheriff's deputy. Louis Lee, Bryant's lawyer, in his opening statement, on Wednesday, played jurors the CCTV footage of an off-duty sheriff drinking at a bar and showing photos to Gutierrez who shakes his head in dismay. The lawyer then showed an image of men laughing together. Lou described firefighters looking at the photos two weeks later at an awards banquet and showed the jury an animated chart documenting their spread to nearly 30 people. Upon hearing Gutierrez being questioned, Brian cried, stood up, and her attorney asked the presiding judge permission for Brian to leave the courtroom. You don't have to ask my permission, the judge said. Brian did not return for the remaining of his testimony. The jurors were shown surveillance clips from the bar on January 28th, 2020, two days after the crash. Gutierrez described wincing at the photos and then admitting to telling the condition of the victim's bodies to five sets of people. One person he recounted the photos to was Ralph Mendez, who later filed a complaint against the deputy who initially showed Gutierrez the photo. I was in disbelief, disappointed, and disgusted and angry, Mendez said. Being in the position he is, I felt he has the public trust riding on his shoulders, and when he showed the photos of the victims, he betrayed the public's trust. Earlier on Thursday, the court heard from Los Angeles General Manager uh, Rob Polinka as well as the first responders and coroner. On Wednesday, in opening statements, the court heard that a culture of callousness saw emergency service workers take and share pictures of Brian's body. Lee said the mobile pictures shot at the scene by a deputy and fire captain were visual gossip viewed for laugh and no official purpose. They were shared by deputies playing video games. They were shared repeatedly with people who had absolutely no reason to receive them. A lawyer for the county defended the photographs as an essential tool for emergency service workers seeking to share information when they thought it might help still save lives at the chaotic, dangerous, and hard-to-reach crash scene in the Calabasas Hills of West Los Angeles. Site photography is essential. Jennifer Mira Hashmail said, Brian cried frequently during her lawyer's presentation. She was still wiping tears from her eyes at minutes uh, after and during the break. Lee told jurors a month after the crash, circulation uh, not from the county but Los Angeles Times compounded her still raw suffering. In January 26th was the worst day of her life. 
The county made it much worse, Lee said. They poured salt in an open wound and rubbed it in. Lee said the county failed to conduct a thorough investigation to make sure that every copy of the photo was accounted for and because of the fear that they will someday surface and her surviving children may see them online, Bryant will be haunted by what they did forever. During the defense opening statement, Hashmel told juries, in fact, that the pictures had not appeared in more than two years. It shows leaders in the sheriff's department and fire services did their jobs. They're not on media. They're not online. They've never been seen by the plaintiffs themselves, she said. That is not an accident. That is a function of how diligent they were. Wow. Sheriff Alex Villanueva and department officials immediately brought all those involved and ordered them to delete the pictures. And rather than conduct a long official investigation that might harm the families, they, did, they didn't do that, she said. He picked what he viewed as the only option, divisive, I mean, decisive action, Hashmel said. He felt like every second mattered. Wow. <coughs> he pulled out his phone. And that should have not happened, she said. In a lapse moment of weakness, he showed the photos and he regretted it every day of his life. Hashville told the jury that the reason Lai had the video, gave the video to the barman, which she suggested was deceptively edited to show the men laughing together was because the sheriff's department got it the same day and they received a complaint from another punter who witnessed the sheriff. The defense lawyer urged jurors to look past the grief of those who brought the lawsuit and focus on the matter before them. There is no doubt that these families have suffered, she said. It's unspeakable. But this case is not about the loss of from the crash. It's about the pictures. Chris Chester, whose wife Sarah and daughter Peyton were also killed in the crash, is also a plaintiff in the lawsuit, which seeks unspecified million. The county already agreed to pay $2.5 to settle their case brought by two families whose relatives died in the crash. Bryant and Chester declined to settle. The trial is expected to last about two weeks and witnesses will likely include Vanessa Bryant and L.A. County Sheriff Alex Villanueva. Kobe Bryant, Gianna, and other parents and players were flying to a girls' basketball tournament. Y'all know the rest. When their helicopter crashed in the fall. Safety officials Blame the pilot. Wow. Sad story. Let me hear y'all opinion about this story. Uh, it's very sad that Vanessa has to go through this. But it is what it is. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share the channel.